You are now listening to Hope in the Truth. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Hope and the Truth. If you'd like to, we're going to be in the uh, book of Matthew today, chapter 5. And let's start at, let's start at law, uh, line 43. You have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be the children of your Father, which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love them which love you, what reward have you? Do not even the publicans the same? And if you salute your brothers only, what do you more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be you therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. This passage really stood out to me uh, today because it was interesting. I was hearing a a person speak uh, to an audience, and sometimes you'll see people on the streets, and they'll be speaking and uh, literally having people ask them questions about the gospel. And a person posed a question. They go, so let me get this straight. To be in heaven, you need to be perfect. He said, yes. And he they said, well, is anyone perfect? And he said, no. And he goes, but there are people in heaven. He said, yes. And he goes, can you explain this? And he goes, yes, grace. Grace is defined as unmerited favor. And in all of our lives, this is what the Lord has been showing us, that mercy. Mercy is not getting what we deserve. So if we look at the time that we live in, and grace and mercy has come through Christ Jesus, right, in the actual sharing of the gospel, that knowing that when the Lord looks at us, when you've repented and believed in the Lord Jesus, his perfection, right? He lived a perfect life. He came in the flesh and lived a perfect life. That's what the Lord sees when he looks at us. When you've repented, meaning turned from your sin, and believe that the Lord Jesus is perfect, right? It says very clearly in scripture, none of us is good. No, not one. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. So how can we be perfect as our Father in heaven is perfect? Well, the first thing is to repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, because in that, he lived a perfect life and atoned for our sin. And so his perfection has reconciled us to God when we repent and we believe. The other aspect of this is when Jesus said, I give you one new commandment, which is to love your neighbor as yourself. And in this passage, it's beautifully summed up that everyone but you is your neighbor, And so, therefore, he also states, Jesus, uh, he stated that in the love that you show one another, the world will know that you're my disciples. And disciples meaning followers of Christ. That's what Christian means. It means a follower of Christ. You know, the world has given a very different definition, probably very skewed and murky. But I love the word of God because God makes it very clear to us. It doesn't have to be confusing. And it shouldn't be because Satan's the author of confusion, not God. And so when sharing the gospel with another, understand something that, why it's good news. We all deserve death. We deserved hell. We were under and and in slavery to sin. Jesus came, lived a perfect life, set us free by atoning for our sins, showing reconciliation or actually giving us reconciliation to God. Now that's a gift. This is a free gift offered by God to us. What do we have to do to be saved? Well, repent. Because in repentance, you see what you were saved from, what you were deserving of. Because in that, you then see you need a Savior. And believe that the Lord Jesus is that Savior for us. That's the reconciliation to God. The gospel is very straightforward. right? He ascended after the third day, sits at the right hand of the Father. So it's not complicated. I think sometimes people view something as being complicated to make it mean more. But in reality, the Lord's given us something that even a child could understand it. So in this passage, Jesus is making something very clear that in times of old, it's been said, love your enemies uh, or or hate your enemies and love your neighbor. He's claiming, right, saying, love everyone. That is your neighbor. Those that despitefully use you, those that have come against you, because at one point, we had all done this to God. We're, We're truly understanding the gift and what forgiveness is. That's why the Lord says these things is that we're growing. The things that we've been taught in the world are against God. It's open rebellion. That's what this world teaches because Satan is the prince of this world. And so he teaches rebellion against God. 
upon the Lord setting us free and us choosing and saying yes, because it's not forced, it's a choice, the Lord is now raising us as what? Children of the Most High. So I hope this message finds you well, and I invite you to go back when people say, well, we're not perfect. You're right. Jesus is. And in accepting that and believing in him, his perfection is what the Lord sees when he looks at us. It's what Christ did, not what we can do. We simply say yes. What we've contributed to our salvation was the sin, and that's what made it necessary. So I hope this message finds you well, and we'll see you next time, guys. God bless. Hello, everyone. We are inviting you to tune in to www.faithback.live. It is our desire that through Faithback, that the message of salvation through Jesus may bring life, comfort, and hope to you, our dear listeners. We are streaming 24-7, and our mission is to bring the gospel of Jesus to the nations. Join us as we fight back fear with faith in Jesus Christ. Once again, that's www.faithback.live. God bless you and keep you.